Hi everyone, time for my final review of the year. It's a He-Man and She-Ra 2 for 1. Today I'm reviewing the Once and Future Duke from his first season and Huntara from the end of She-Ra's first season as well. On with the reviews! Now, let's start with the Once and Future Duke. The episode is the series debut of the villain Count Marzo, whom I discussed previously in the bad episode reviews from season 2. The Once and Future Duke concerns He-Man trying to help Philip, the rightful ruler of a section of Eternia who has been turned into a child and who has also lost his memory. Count Marzo is his uncle and he's used Philip's default stay to take over his land. Now, one thing I can say in far better comparison to Marceau's Season 2 appearances is that the Once and Future Duke is head and shoulders above both of those episodes. That said, Marceau's plot still revolves around a child, well, sort of, and he's still a bit of a creepy dweeb. A thing I never really discussed in the later Season 2 episodes was Marceau's assistant Shamira, who had the power of teleportation. In this, his first appearance, Marzo has a different henchman who bears a fading resemblance to Shamira. However, his name is Chimera, in reference to the Greek creature. It kinda looks like they pulled another Kothos Kathos with this one, but at least Shamira looked and sounded different from Chimera, so it's not as gratingly obvious. We also see Marzo's gargoyles, um, or pterodactyls, the same as in the Search for a Sun episode, so there is at least some consistency with the later appearances. To be fair, the idea of turning someone into a child and wiping their memory is a sort of a terrifying idea, and I think this is the one and only episode where Marzo is at least moderately threatening. He's even able to wipe Orko's memories temporarily, albeit by accident. In order to get Philip's memories back, He-Man needs the Ring of Remembrance. The ring is in a lake which Marzo contaminates with water from the Pool of Forgetfulness, which is when Orko suffers from his free fit with amnesia. He-Man manages to drain the lake, which is when the heroes discover a whole bunch of rings. Now the way He-Man finds the right one is sort of dumb because the ring apparently has some magical metal which is attracted to his sword. That's a very new Adventures of E-Man way of dealing with the problem. However, I do love the image of the thousands of rings E-Man and company would have potentially had to go through. There's a lot of great imagery and action scenes in this one, and that's pretty much the biggest thing which elevates it above the later Marzo episodes. Now another reason I bring this episode up is the finale. This episode starts with He-Man not knowing who Count Marzo is, which means that this episode is the debut episode of the character. However, at the finale, Marzo himself falls into the pool and gets amnesia. Now, listen to what Tila says here. He's forgotten to be evil. This honestly bothers me a little bit because it implies that Marzo may not be naturally evil, which makes a lot of his later escapades questionable. Now, I'm sure He-Man and company probably gave him his memories back later. The question is, why? And also, I thought Marzo was supposed to be thousands of years old. <laughs> I've lived for thousands of years, He-Man, and I will outlive you. In the end, we'll see who rules Eternia. Seems like the filmation crew couldn't make up their minds about this villain's origins. So that's the Once in Future Duke, a decently good He-Man episode which features Count Marzo, one of the worst He-Man villains ever, but like I said, it's at least slightly enjoyable. Now for Huntara. This episode deals with Hordak hiring an off-world warrior called Huntara to fight Shira. Huntara is a total badass, but it turns out she's fighting Shira for all the wrong reasons. Hordak lies to her, shows some Dr. Fritch, and makes it seem like Shira is a troublemaker, destroying the property of the quote-unquote rightful rulers of Etheria. So Huntara kidnaps Glimmer and fights Shira one-on-one. -on -one. This became one of my favorite Shira episodes when I first saw it, and I'm not gonna lie. It was almost solely because of Huntara's badassery and her lightsabers. Sorry, stun swords. That's the thing that always bugged me about Shira, and to a lesser extent He-Man. How the villains often weren't allowed to shoot just lasers, and instead had to keep mentioning how the rays would either stun or freeze their victims. Huntara is just a really awesome character. She doesn't take shit from Hordak's crew, and even insists that none of them help her out fighting Shira. I will admit, though, that probably the most surprising thing about her is her voice. Furthermore, there's a really cool little side plot of Catra and Scorpia plotting together to take down Shira and Huntara because they feel threatened by her fucking awesomeness. I won't spoil this episode anymore. Needless to say, it's an absolute must-see. And that's all from me for now. Until next time, I have the power, so can you.